So welcome and uh, that and Linda and Abba, you've done a fabulous job and I really appreciate it. Right now, I would like to introduce Gene Cassidy and Scott, if you would uh, spotlight Gene. Gene is our Area C2 Director. She's also Secretary of the Marketplace Toastmasters and President of 3030 Communicators. Now, she's doing all of that in Founders District and yet she's living in Maine. Oh my goodness. Gene, it's, it's 92 degrees here in, in Southern California. It's got to be colder than that in Maine. Yes, it's not 92 degrees here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you flip the two, you'll get there around where I am. <laughs> well, Gene is president of 3030 Communicators. That is an outgrowth of working wardrobes. And Jean, would you tell us about Working Wardrobes and introduce our keynote speaker this morning? Thank you so very much for that, David. Welcome, everyone. Today's keynote speaker has an uncanny way of selecting two seemingly random, unrelated ideas and or people and combining them into an unbelievable new partnership. I should know, since I witnessed this creativity and her compassion many times, first as a volunteer and then as a staff member of work. Apparently I went mute, so I will start over. I apologize. Today's keynote speaker has an uncanny way of selecting two seemingly random, unrelated ideas and or people and combining them into an unbelievable new partnership. I should know since I witnessed this creativity and her compassion many times, first as a volunteer and then as a staff member of Working Wardrobes. In the past 30 years, this Orange County nonprofit has served over 105,000 clients, treating each one with respect, empowering self-confidence, and offering the gifts of the dignity of work and the power of a paycheck. The four words that are always music to our ears are, I got the job. The power of one is an integral part of the culture at Working Wardrobes. Jerry Rosen said, I can lay claim to putting one idea in motion, but it has been the power of each individual volunteer and staff member that has had fueled our growth and success. The power of one is the story of how many hands have made our organization thrive even in the midst of a devastating fire and worldwide pandemic. Please help me welcome the founder, CEO, and driving force of Working Wardrobes, Jerry Rosen. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here, Linda Robinson. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I am delighted on a Saturday morning to be with you. And thank you everyone for getting up on a Saturday morning. What a treat, what an absolute treat. Jean, I appreciate your kind words. We miss you desperately at Working Wardrobes, but it's great to see you on the screen. So the power of one truly is the story of what we're doing at Working Wardrobes. It's one idea it's one volunteer, it's one company, it's one client, it's the story of people transforming lives for sure. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Scott. Can you turn that on for me to, to advance? Scott, it's not advancing. Oh, 
All right, thank you. I want to start this presentation with a quote that we've been using for years at Working Wardrobes. And I don't know that there's a quote that is more relevant for what we're going through in our country today. In every community, there is work to be done. In every nation, there are wounds to heal. In every heart, there's the power to do it. While I thought years ago that this quote just really talked about the work that we're doing at Working Wardrobes, this is something that I think we can all own today and that we need to do. If the power of one is really connected to this. Every single one of us and every single one of you in your clubs are doing this kind of work on a daily basis. Scott, it looks like you're gonna to have to forward for me. It's not working, okay. When we talk about the work that we're doing in working wardrobes, there is a tremendous need, not just in the Orange County community, but in every community that you're in across the country. Thousands of people are out of jobs because of COVID. And for us at Working Wardrobes, the words that we're using is around rebuilding careers. We think that's the most important need for people in our own community. We have a very high cost of living. It's actually true that people need to work two and three jobs just to afford a one bedroom apartment. And literally 10% of the people in Orange County are living in poverty, even though it appears that Orange County is the lap of luxury with the high end shopping, obviously Disneyland, but we have an underbelly of great poverty right in our own community. The unemployment and underemployment has never been greater and we're seeing an enormous number of people who need the help that we can give them and that we want to give them. Over 100,000 jobs have been lost just since the pandemic be began. So we have a lot of work to do in rebuilding careers. We have actually seen industries literally disappearing. Healthcare, hospitality, retail, food service, and certainly what we've seen at Disneyland. Now it's a place where you can get a vaccine. This is not exactly, I would imagine, what Walt Disney had in mind, but that's also an opportunity for people to be in the happiest place on earth. We started working with volunteers about nine years ago and the need is ever greater to help the volunteer community. It's work that we're very, very honored to do. Both Mary Ann Profeta, who is my chief program officer, and I have fathers who were in World War II. And so for us, it, this is a personal outreach to veterans. We have a love to help veterans as patriots, and we're doing a phenomenal job. Over 3,000 veterans have already been employed in the work that we're doing in Orange County. You're going to see a number of these transitions as we go through the presentation today. And literally, we're going to show you the before of our client and what our client looks like after we have been able to serve them. With confidence building on the inside, dignity on the outside, and really putting their lives back on track. Now, that transition took just a few seconds for you to see but it could take us weeks, it could take us months, it could take us years to truly restore the dignity that each of our clients really deserve. And you'll see a number of these transitions as we go through the presentation today. It's a very simple thought at Working Wardrobes and yet very complex. We do everything in our power to help all of the audiences that we serve, the men, the women, the young adults and the veterans, overcome any challenges that they're currently going through so they can truly achieve what we think is so critically important, the power of a paycheck. This is about restoring dignity to each of the clients that we serve. We do it one person at a time. It's the power of one. 
We've taken this new campaign idea, Working Wardrobes is Rebuilding Careers, because this is exactly what has to happen in every one of our careers and every one of our communities today. We're looking at new industries, we're looking at new skill sets, we're looking at how we can get people back on their feet and into a job that pays them a living wage. Hugely important. Our clients come in all ages and stages and sizes. Our job is simply not to judge, but to provide the support that each client needs in the way that he or she truly needs it. And you'll see the subtlety of these presentations. There's a word that comes up on the after. <clears throat> Scott, if you, could, if you could forward that to the after photograph. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The change, the transformation, when people are truly treated with dignity and respect. Now, every company has a mission statement and a vision statement, and ours truly is exactly what we have said. We do everything in our power to help our clients overcome whatever challenges they face. We believe there is great dignity in work. And as we just finished our 30th year and served, as Jean said, over 105 clients, we are absolutely committed to doing even more in our 31st year and well beyond. With so many people out of work in our community and in communities across the country, we believe that rebuilding careers is absolutely essential. We're poised and ready. We have rebuilt and we're ready to do everything that needs to be done for our clients. That's the transition that makes us smile on a daily basis for sure. This all started nearly 31 years ago with what I thought was going to be just a one-time only day of self-esteem for women. I'm an entrepreneur. I had my own advertising agency at the time, and I drew some of my friends together, and I said, why don't we put together an event to help survivors of domestic violence get back on their feet? We were moved and absolutely flabbergasted that, that there were more shelters for dogs than there were for domestic violence survivors. We thought if we could just give them a sense of dignity and rebuild their confidence and give them some of the tools, do a skill set, we could give them a little more oomph to get back into the workforce. This was completely done by volunteers. We had no idea how to put this together 31 years ago, but I will tell you then it was magical and it's magical today. And that happens to be me 31 years ago. We continue to do these events and we, we hope to do these events this year what, as soon as we can get through this pandemic. This is the opportunity for people in just a day to have their lives transformed. I thought it was so important as we put working wardrobes together that we have very solid founding principles. Obviously, our goal was to make a significant contribution to people in our community. We wanted to make sure that we honored and acknowledged every volunteer and donor. And I will tell you secretly that this came from an experience that I personally had on another board of directors of an organization that thought, if you're a volunteer, you're gonna get your thanks when you get to heaven. So it wasn't important to do anything here on earth. I don't believe that. And we are very, very focused on making sure that we honor, that we thank, that we appreciate all of our volunteers and all of our donors. The entire staff spent the month of November and December writing thank you notes to volunteers and donors in our database. It was a great opportunity to express gratitude. Because we work in a category where people are having challenges in their lives, we think it's also important to 
lighten it, to have fun, and to really stay as connected as we possibly can. Equally important is that we always want to see, is there a new idea? Is there a new training? Is there something else that we can add that would be of value to our clients? And these principles continue to direct the work that we do on a daily basis. Now, even though we started with women, we've been serving men since 1998. It was very clear that unless we got the men of America back on their feet, families would be at risk forever. And so that also toggled with the idea of reaching out to the men's warehouse. And I will tell you the power of one is so prevalent here. One volunteer by the name of Norm Rodich wrote a letter to George Zimmer. And he said, Mr. Zimmer, I'm a satisfied customer of the men's warehouse and we're doing something really important in our community. We need your help. That partnership continues today with endless amounts of product, support, rolling racks, anything that we need to get the job done. Norm also put a drive together and think about the name of this, everyone. Lawsuits was the name of his clothing drive and you have to love an attorney with a sense of humor, I sure do. We continue to work with the men's warehouse. They just sent us pallets full of brand new clothing that we'll take to Camp Pendleton to serve our transitioning Marines and sailors. A phenomenal experience of the power of one. This might look like an IBM convention. This happens to be the finale at one of our men's days of self-esteem. This is the possibility when people are treated with dignity, with kindness, and a focus on service from all of our volunteers. I want you to really look at this transition. Scott, if you might just do that again. This young man had the nickname of the bear. And at the end of one of our career success graduations, this is what he looked like. The people that he came with from his shelter didn't even recognize him. He nearly lost his way home. But I show you this, although this is really a remarkable transformation and we rarely have this exact kind of situation, but this gentleman, truly represents how people feel about themselves and how they can be made to feel about themselves. There's no need to hide. There's an opportunity to be very present in life. At any one of these full day events, we have a motivational speaker. We do grooming, hair, and wardrobing. We usually have a career and resource fair and a fashion show and finale. Now, some of the gentlemen listening in might not think that you would participate in a fashion show, but oh my, at the end of these events, the roof literally comes off because the men are feeling so great about how they look. And this is a chance for them to really show their colleagues there's a new look, there's a new possibility in their future. You can see some of these transitions of both the men's career success graduation and our next slide will show you exactly the same transition that we were doing for our women. Thank you, Scott. That is a tremendous transition. And you can only imagine looking that way, feeling that way, the opportunity to have an interview. We have absolutely new starts for our clients and that's what we're looking for. We had just looked at how we could celebrate our first 30 years. We thought that was a huge milestone and I truly was ready to celebrate for the entire year. 
I said, I don't want any challenges in our 30th year. I just want to celebrate. We've gone through a lot. There was a different message coming to us on the morning of February 2nd. Scott, if you can go to the next slide. This four alarm fire is what happened on the morning of February 2nd. Everything in our Career Success Center in Irvine was destroyed. Now you would think, okay, was it about to be over? Did we just need to close our doors and just say, gosh, 30 years was a great run? Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, there wasn't one of us who thought that idea. We knew we simply had to rebuild. And here's what happened. The community embraced us with so much emotion and support money that came in, clothing that came in, and the words that people sent to me were so powerful and moving. They said, Jerry, we know that you will rebuild and you'll be better and bigger and stronger than ever. And we are. And Scott, if you can move to the next, because honestly, I'm done with that slide, truly done with that slide. We have rebuilt and we are rebuilt to last. The support was overwhelming. We had a press conference the night before and a dear friend of mine, Nicole Sudam, who's the CEO of Goodwill, offered us a place to do our work and we moved in the next morning, right after the fire. There are some extra slides, yes. So we started with an empty warehouse and literally within weeks we had filled it up. The community was insanely, insanely generous to us and we loved every part of it. We're now in the city of Santa Ana. It's a city that I've always wanted our work to be headquartered in and I know it's the headquarters of Toastmasters so we are connected in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. You can move ahead. This is our new lobby and our Career Success Center in Santa Ana. We are the entire first floor of a two-story office building. And I will tell you, it is the most professional, the most elegant place we have ever had. There are always silver linings going through challenges. And we certainly came through with flying colors. Everything that's in our new building really is centered around our Career Success Institute. And I want to show you a few of the programs that constitute the Career Success Institute. We did a tremendous amount of pivoting very quickly, like I'm sure all of you have since we've been in this pandemic. All of our services went virtual, which meant that overnight we could serve people in Alaska, in Hawaii, in Chicago, in New York, in Florida, and we did. So this pandemic actually does have some positive opportunities. We have been able to serve people that we would never have been able to reach any other way. So we're very proud of our team going virtual and serving across the country. We've become a national organization. And in spite of what happened in the pandemic, we still managed to provide nearly 10,000 services to our clients. And if you can move forward, Scott, we, oh, and here we've got a, oh my goodness, this is an amazing transformation, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely amazing. Nearly 3,000 clients despite the fact that we couldn't have a number of our clients come in for wardrobing or the client events that you've seen, nearly 3,000 clients. That means that each client received almost three different types of services. So the staff was insanely busy in 2020 and 2021 is starting off exactly the same way. We're very, very excited about the growth of the organization. Our clients go through, <clears throat> go through a variety of different services from assessments, soft skills, hard skills. There's an 
individual employment plan put together for each of our clients. This is not a one size fits all. This is individually tailored plans so that each client is taken care of. When we were together before the pandemic, there was absolutely one-on-one -on -one work with each of our clients and many of our customer service training, all of our trainings ended with a graduation. That is done by design. It is so important for us to acknowledge the work that our clients are doing and to give them a sense of pride and dignity. They have completed a training and they have a graduation certificate as a result of that. Very, very powerful experience for them. We have a variety of different types of trainings that we're doing for our clients, and we continue to this day to look for many more. Where are the industries that are hiring? Where are the opportunities for us to find our clients jobs with dignity? This happens to be one of our veteran clients. And you might say that the suit makes the man. I always say to our clients that it's the man inside the suit that really makes the statement. And as Jean mentioned, we do have four favorite words at Working Wardrobes. And these are the words, I got the job, not a job. I got the job that's going to get me to that next place in my life and with my career. And we have a banner that our clients stand in front of that says, I got the job. That's an anchoring moment for each of our clients, for sure. You might wonder, how do we serve these clients? We have over 30 years developed an enormous network of shelters and programs in throughout Southern California. Our clients for the most part are referred to us from programs that don't offer the services that we do. We are a natural collaborative partner with many, many shelters and we continue to find more ways to partner in different communities. All ages, all stages, all sizes. But respect is absolutely one of the issues that we make sure that each of our clients has a chance to experience. Our VetNet program was started by one very committed volunteer, the power of one volunteer by the name of Harry Humphreys. And Scott, if you'll move ahead, there's some great statistics of how we have served our veterans, nearly 3,000 since the program began, and more and more successes on a daily basis. Just to the year of 2020, we were able to get 65 clients' jobs. That was remarkable, given all of the issues that we faced. And we continue to follow up with each of the clients after they're on the job. I mentioned that we do some, some tie-ins with our, our military and we've been invited to do some events on the base at Camp Pendleton. And the top left is one of my bucket list photographs, ladies and gentlemen. I am surrounded by well-dressed young Marines. Absolutely one of the most fun days. These are Marines and sailors who are transitioning from active duty and we'll be leaving the military, our job is to help them make that transition as easy and seamless as we possibly can. We call it a soft landing, and that's definitely our job. The lower left shows our power five line. We wanna make sure that our Marines and sailors really feel surrounded by love and affection, and we're definitely giving them high fives all the way through. Another program we're very, very excited to talk about is our CSEP program. We're working with low-income seniors. 
We're helping with their training and workforce skills, and we're putting them to work in other nonprofit organizations. So they are paid for the work that they're doing and going through a retraining. And we're happy to say that we're also getting a number of our seniors back to work. One of the newest programs that we added last year was called Reentry to Success. We're actually going into the jails, not at the moment, but we will be, and working with people who are incarcerated, putting together an employment plan and working with them through the time that they are released. Our job now is to work with those who have been released and to help them with their workforce readiness skills and to also get them jobs. And I will tell you quite honestly, the people that we're working with are so eager to get back into the workforce. They know that they've got to get back on their feet so they're not going to go back into jail. It's an exciting program and the success has been tremendous so far. We have just a small staff at Working Wardrobes of 38 highly dedicated and energetic people. And yet we're serving thousands and thousands of clients every single year. So how do we do that? The truth is we do it because we have an army of volunteers. Scott, if you can move ahead. They are just like our clients, all ages and stages. We have people who are in their teens. We have people who are in their 80s and everything in between. We have people who bring us tremendous skill sets and dedication and a desire to help our clients truly get back on their feet. And we do love and honor every one of them. Our partners also include companies. FedEx has been a tremendous partner. UPS, I mean, we, we don't discriminate and we love everyone, even competitors. But the energy of volunteers is just absolutely extraordinary. When we talk about volunteers, and I would invite anyone who's listening in, if you're in the Southern California area and you're looking to do something as a volunteer, if you're looking to get your company involved, we have tremendous ways that we can engage you as volunteers. This is just an idea of the kinds of work that our volunteers do. Companies can come on site to do a, a corporate social responsibility day. We have volunteers in every single aspect of the work that we're doing. I happened to mention to you a man by the name of Norm Brodich who wrote the letter to George Zimmer. The bottom photograph and the gentleman on the left is my good friend, Norm Brodich, who comes every year when we do our client events and works as a personal shopper. He's that dedicated to us ongoing. And thank you, Lori, for getting people information on how they can volunteer with us. I love that. We have a number of partners, both as employers and the industries that have connected with us and our staff is reaching out on a daily basis. Scott, if you'll move ahead. This just gives you an overview of the number of companies that have embraced our clients and that we continue to work with. And the next slide shows you some of the, com the community partners that we're also working with. There is almost every opportunity for any company or community group to connect with working wardrobes. And if people don't know how they can do that, honestly, we are most creative and we're going to figure out a way to make it work for everyone. If you're into social media, I would love, love, love it if you'd get social with us. We are very active on Facebook. We're active on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. So those handles are for you to just connect with us and you can follow the work that we're doing in all aspects. We'd love that. Thank you in advance. We are very active in public affairs. We have become 
if you'll move, move ahead, Scott. For two years in a row, I'm very happy to say that we were awarded the outstanding nonprofit in the state of California by our elected officials. We're there on the, on the floor of the house in Sacramento receiving our proclamation. And that is such an honor to be selected. There are that hundreds of thousands of nonprofit organizations in our state. There are over a million and a half nonprofits in this country. We're all looking to do something positive and very important in our community. And to be recognized by our elected officials is really quite the honor. Unfortunately, we lost those proclamations in the fire, but the memories are never, ever gone. Scott, if you could move ahead. We work with our locally elected officials, both at the board of supervisor level, the city mayors, the city councils. We are continuing to work on connections in Sacramento and all of the local offices. And the next slide will show you that we continue also to work at the federal level. It's very important for us to see where are the opportunities for grants, for additional funding, with our political connections. <clears throat> now, that's extraordinary. That's the possibility of what one client can do when he or she is served with dignity. but it takes some money to deliver this mission. And the equation that I believe is nearly tattooed on everyone's forearm and working wardrobes is simply this, more money equals more mission. We can't do everything just for free. And while it sounds like what we're doing is just getting clothing, we are doing so much more. And if you'll move ahead, Scott, we have a variety of ways that we raise money. In the nonprofit world, a social enterprise is literally a business that's connected to the mission. For us at Working Wardrobes, we happen to have four wonderful stores, resale stores. If you'll move ahead, Scott. I happen to be a social entrepreneur and it comes from my DNA. This happens to be my dad in his store in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Check out that cash register, ladies and gentlemen. Those are lo long gone. But I thought when I was a kid that every daddy had a cash register because that's where our money came from. I didn't know that you had paychecks that you were getting when you had a job in corp the corporate world. But my dad always loved having his own business. And when we started opening stores, I found myself right behind that counter and buy our cash register. Now we've got tablets. But the opportunity to open up stores and to find great managers who are given the latitude to literally own their own businesses is really important. As people donate great quality clothing, Scott, if you can move ahead and then move ahead again. These are the logos of our stores. We have two hanger boutiques, we have two hanger outlets, and now we have the hanger online. And I'm going to show you some of the clothes in the next few slides. Great quality clothing. The hangers are in Laguna Niguel. Look at these beautiful gowns. Everything from professional attire, resort wear, evening gowns, our, the next slides are gonna show you a variety of the, the clothing that we have. Men's clothing, women's clothing, all beautifully put together. And for those of you who are not in the Southern California area, you can certainly shop with us online at our Parshmark store. Because as people shop, they actually help us provide more transformative services for our clients. That is a huge win for sure. 
Now, beyond the clothing that we do, we also host a number of fundraising events. So for those of you who are calling in from all over the country, here's a chance for you to participate and help those of us at Working Wardrobes. We're doing a virtual event called 30 Strong. Between March 19th and March 28th, you can run, you can bike, you can hike, you can do anything your heart desires. Challenge yourself, raise money and join the team put a team together, this is going to be an extraordinary event. And we can certainly, the registration is now open. You can go online and put a team together and know that you're doing something extraordinarily good for people who really wanna get back to work. We have put together several scholarship programs and this one I think might be really of interest to you. So many of our clients are on the wrong side of the digital divide. And this particular campaign puts people in our IT technology classes, our workshops, our wardrobing, and they also receive their own laptop to use. Those of you in companies that have extra laptops, if they're in really good condition, we're still looking for more laptops. We probably always will, but a great way to scholarship a client just $1,000 puts them through everything that we can provide in our Rebuilding Careers program. We, these are the four most important words to us. This happens to be a female Marine who is doing exceptionally well after the work that we have done to make sure that she is on her feet connected to us and absolutely taking care of her family in the best possible way. Let's ask just two questions, ladies and gentlemen. If not us, who? If not, if not now, when? Again, I think we've all been so affected in the last few weeks of the issues going on in our country. Those of us at Working Wardrobes on a daily basis know that we are making change happen in the most positive of ways for our clients. We invite you to think about how you might participate, whether it's to be a volunteer, whether it's to donate clothing, whether it's to donate much needed funding, there are ways for everyone to support us. And we obviously love to have you be a part of 30 Strong as well. Next slide, Scott. I really just wanna say thank you to everyone who has tuned in this morning, to my dear friend, Jean Cassidy, freezing there in Maine, to Linda, for inviting me and to Scott for working me through the, the slides. I so appreciate all of you. I think what you're doing in Toastmasters is way beyond becoming better speakers. I decided to have a Toastmasters club at Working Wardrobes because I know it helps people be better human beings. And I support you and salute you for all that you're doing and think that your work is just extraordinary. And I thank you so much for inviting me to join you this morning. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much. What a, what a powerful, inspiring message of how you're helping our community. And it turned out not to be just a one-time event, but a 30-year lifetime event. Right. Um, one of the things that struck me was the two words, honor and acknowledge. Not only do you give respect and dignity to your clients, but you honor and acknowledge the workers who help you give them that dignity and respect. Those are, those are Toastmasters values, if ever there were some. Mm -hmm. um, no wonder you've been successful. You have such a positive outlook and uh, such a servant's heart to help individuals, no matter who they are, what their condition is. 
Jerry, wonderful message today. And we can all take a great deal from this in our, in our daily lives. Thank you, David. And I do want to give a shout out. I know I have a few of our staff who tuned in to listen to me this morning. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you getting up to support me this morning and for everyone across the country. I think you're exceptional. And again, big shout out to Linda Robinson and to Jean Cassidy. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Thank we you, have a few minutes. Uh, if, if you have questions for Jerry, please type them into the chat window and then uh, to, then we'll have uh, Gene Cassidy will read those questions to Jerry and uh, and go with that if you have a few questions. And thank you, Jerry. That was really inspirational. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Go ahead and type your questions in to the chat. I had one question earlier that asked about the headshots and who takes them, Jerry? Oh, an incredibly talented volunteer who comes to each of our events and does the before photograph and then the and, and the after. And I will tell you, we we do somewhat stage it a bit. We ask the clients on the before shot not to smile. We really want that transition to be as powerful as it can be. So what you're seeing is really this amazing process. And it may be just the blink of an eye, but honestly, it takes the time that it takes for each of our clients. So volunteers show up doing everything in the world for us every single day. Great, thank you. And we have another question that just came in. Do you have plans to extend programming into the community of people living with disabilities? Actually, we, we continue to work with people with disabilities. We've had any number of clients who uh, are in wheelchairs, who are deaf. We have people who work with the, uh, the uh, disability organizations in Orange County. So we, we don't shy from, from any group. Uh, whatsoever. And people with disabilities are also just phenomenal volunteers. We can do as much of our work volunteer, uh, virtually as we need to do on site. All right, and it looks like one more. Do the hanger stores double as donation centers for clothing? We would much prefer that people come to our new donation center, which is in Irvine, California. And we're going to ask everyone to please, whatever you donate to work or to please bring them on clean and on hangers. We want our clothes to have as much dignity as the work that we do. And no trash bags, please, but clothes clean and on hangers. We have a brand new donation center in Irvine on Daimler. It is open. Monday through Saturday, Tuesday through Saturday from nine to three, a tremendous team to welcome you and to thank you and to find ways that maybe we can get you connected in a, in a different way and more meaningful way at work. You yes. don't miss a beat, everyone. <laughs> and then Jerry, where is Daimler? Where, what are the cross streets for Daimler? We're, we're, we're close. We're right off of uh, Red Hill and McGaw. Okay. It's in the older part of Irvine. And then if someone wants to connect as a client, how, how best should they do that? They can call the office and the phone number is 714-210-2460 and talk to anyone on our programming staff. Uh, literally probably just start the conversation with Ashley Vulcan, that would work. Thank you. Can, you. can you use any additional volunteers? Oh. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and I got a note here that says, thank you for bringing your very own Toastmaster group to working wardrobes and 3030 communicators. Thanks you every day, Jerry, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love it, we love it. And Jean, thank you for, and I think Dinah is also on the call. Thank you both for continuing to spearhead the group. Honestly, as we do our own presentations and we do an all staff meeting every week, it is amazing to see 
how fluent the, the staff are getting in their presentations. It's, it's just marvelous. So we're, we're Toastmaster believers for sure. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you for that vote of confidence in us. If everyone would just take a minute, I posted the URL for the WACE workshop survey. Try to go ahead and give that a shout. Um, please provide that information quickly. And Jerry, thank you for all that you do, all that you have done over the last 30 years and for sharing just the power of you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to ask if you could to put my email address up. I, I just saw a little note from Thomas Olson. He's looking to see how he might get involved because his daughter and wife were in NCL. Thomas, call me or send me an email. We'll find a way to get connected. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.